Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. Today, we're going to give a presentation titled Why We're Avoiding Ginkgo Bioworks. Now, before we get into that, a lot of people on Twitter, when they see this title, or people that search for the title on YouTube, will immediately come to hear a bare thesis. And because we're risk averse investors, we can completely find a story very compelling, but at the same time, not choose to invest in it. And today we're gonna to talk about why that is. Ginkgo Bioworks is probably the single most exciting story we've come across. And we cover around 50 different disruptive tech themes. Of those, the most promising would be synthetic biology. Why? Biology is the most advanced manufacturing technology we have. And you can think about taking a seed, putting it in the ground, waiting a certain period of time, and suddenly you have food to eat. Is there any other process that we have that can convert such simple elements into something of value? And the answer is no. So the promise of synthetic biology has been that we can start to manipulate nature for our own purposes. So a good example might be George Church was working on an algae that would sweat petroleum. That's pretty remarkable. So the idea is that eventually we can produce all the different chemicals that we use, we can produce those using nature in a much more efficient manner than we do today. So the promise of synthetic biology, there's, there's few stories we like better. And Ginkgo has a platform that will let us start to create things across various industries. Here you can see some of the work they're doing in fragrances, in industrial chemicals. You can see they're doing quite a bit of work there, working with companies like Cargill, agriculture, food and nutrition, so animal-free proteins, all the exciting stuff, pharmaceuticals, they're working with Moderna and Roche. So there's a lot of promise in the company. It may be one of the most exciting companies when they had their IPO, one of the most exciting companies that we were waiting uh, to have an IPO. Now, just because there's a great story doesn't mean we'll invest in it because we don't invest in stories. We invest in traction. So when you look at Ginkgo Bioworks, their business model, it supports a very high valuation. That's because their platform, which they call the Foundry, that is used as a services component of the revenue. So companies will pay them to use that platform to generate molecules and they'll, get, they'll receive revenues for that. Then there's a downstream component that you can see here on the right. Downstream is either royalties. That means if they have a successful molecule and it generates a lot of revenue for their customer, they get a piece of that. And then equity. Now, we don't prefer equity at all. And we'll talk a little bit later why that is. Equity is not a desirable replacement for cash, nor is saying that you received revenue in the form of equity and then counting that as revenue. We, we believe that revenue ought to be cash because that's what helps a business run. So the, there's a, a great deal of excitement around future value that can be obtained from the molecules they're building. And the company correctly says that the cash flows from that component are 100% contribution to margin. So there's no cost associated with that. And there's no ongoing support or delivery costs. And that's great, but we want to be able to see that component arriving. So we want to see that broken out. Also, the choice to structure this downstream economics, how they're going to how are they going to set that up differs by client. So every single client they're working with, they're going to have a different setup. And what that creates is a great deal of unpredictability around when their revenues arrive. So smooth revenues, consistent revenues, those merit a premium in the marketplace, SaaS business models, for example. Unpredictable revenue streams are more volatile and consequently, inversely, don't deserve a premium. They deserve a discount. And we see this in pharmaceuticals where a lot of the, 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 the revenues are quite sporadic. So whilst that sounds very promising, it also ends up with a company that's very overvalued. And, and let's talk about that. So we use what's called a simple valuation ratio. This is so that anybody can calculate it when we're all talking about the same thing. You take the market cap of the company and you divide it by annualized revenues. And when we say annualized revenues, we mean 
last quarter times four. It's that simple. That's the valuation ratio we use. It's called a simple valuation ratio. We look at, we calculate that for Ginkgo Bioworks and you can see on the left here, we've taken the revenues and these are broken down into categories. So we've taken their Q3 2021 revenues. We've multiplied those by four. We've taken the market cap and divided it by that number and we get 51. We don't invest in any company with a simple valuation ratio over 40. That's the set rule that we have that we follow. And some have argued, well, you'll never be able to invest in certain companies. That's rarely the case. I can think of one example is Snowflake that has consistently maintained its, its simple valuation ratio quite high over time. Most companies over time will fall below that based on what we've seen on our experiences so far. And it's not just about the stock price falling. It's about the fact that the next time they have their earnings, which happens four times a year, if they're growing those, or sorry, their, their revenues re reflected four times a year, if the revenue is growing very rapidly, that ratio falls very quickly. And what we've provided here is an example of what that ratio looks like for other companies out there that are, are in, let's say, somewhat related to what Ginkgo Bioworks is doing. So that's the, that's, 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 that's one problem we have with, with the company is that it's overvalued, but it's actually a lot more overvalued than how it appears to be. And the reason for that is this biosecurity element of their revenues. This relates to COVID testing and we're not interested in any temporary COVID thesis. Now you can argue that COVID is here to stay and all that, but if we want to invest in COVID testing providers, we'll go find some and we'll invest in them. That's not what we're, that's not the story Ginkgo Bioworks provided us. And, and what sort of work are they doing? Well, it's called Concentric by Ginkgo. What they're doing here is population testing for classrooms. And the students all swab and they send in the samples. And Ginkgo tells whoever requ requested the test for that population whether or not there was any positives in the population. That's all they tell them. And then the person that requested that can do with that information, they do whatever they want with it. That's why this testing that's being offered by Ginkgo isn't FDA approved because it's, it's, it's performed anonymously. So this testing offering that Ginkgo has is, is detached from the vision that we talked earlier about a platform that, that uses the power of biology and nature to produce great things. That's how we see their biosecurity revenues. So we remove those from the equation. We stick with foundry revenues, and this is what we get. So now it becomes quite a bit more overvalued. That's because biosecurity is over half of their current revenues. So once we remove that component, it becomes even more overvalued. Now, we can break this down even further into what's called foundry revenues and foundry related party revenues. And this brings us to an important occurrence that happened, which was a, a Scorpion Capital's short report. Now, Scorpion's a, a short seller. They short a stock, they produce a report that talks all kinds of smack about a company, the stock price goes down and they make money on their short position. So you have to take everything these companies say with a grain of salt, these reports that the, the short sellers produce. And we did. Their accusations of fraud, we really didn't consider those to be much. They found a bunch of people that could talk smack about their previous employer. Okay, that's fine. And a bunch of, they did all these interviews and, and, and they criticized Ginkgo and we didn't really care about any of that. What we focused on was a, a good point, the report, made, which is called the related party problem. And we've seen this create problems for companies before. And here's how it works. So company X founds company Y, then company X gives company Y $100 million in funding. And then company Y simply gives it back to company X $10 million every year for 10 years. Can company X call that revenue? That's pretty tricky. And and I'm sure you can see why that's tricky. So the short seller report pointed out that this was the case for at least six entities that Ginkgo had founded. So they founded these entities and then the entities took the money that they were defunding and then returned it back to Ginkgo. Now, 
what the short seller report was focused on was what percentage of the foundry revenues that Ginkgo is receiving come from related parties. And they've broken that down here, you can see, and that number is decreasing over time and, and it certainly should. So when we look at foundry revenues, we believe it's fair to remove those as non as not significant to our valuation ratio. What we're more interested in are third-party companies paying Ginkgo for usage of their platform. That number is indeed growing. So when we remove the foundry related from the equation, suddenly the valuation jumps much, much higher. So when we look at Ginkgo Bioworks, we're not interested in the biosecurity component. We're not interested in the related party. We're interested in the money that's being given to Ginkgo Bioworks from third parties, the companies then on the, on the previous slide, like Cargill, like Roche, like Moderna, that com money coming from those companies in the form of revenues, that's what we're interested in and that's what we're tracking. So just getting back quickly to that short seller report, their accusations of fraud, which we never believed in the first place, were, or say should be largely dismissed based on the last earnings call from Ginkgo, where they said they had a third party audit that made sure there was no fraud taking place. We never thought there was in the first place. During that same call, analysts in the call had concerns around the related revenues. And Ginkgo said, well, we generally see the mix shifting over time towards you know, more third party, less related. Well, let's certainly hope so. Let's, let's hope it's not just generally, let's hope it's pretty sharply with, that we see that. that. That would help validate the platform and show that they have traction. And another concern we had was around the time it took for Ginkgo to respond. And there was an interview the CEO had conducted with a journal or a magazine and had, he had made a rather flippant remark about the short seller report that we found odd. And then the company didn't formally respond. And that was probably because they were taking the time to do the due diligence. And then you also had Ark Invest. Now this this short seller had previously attacked Berkeley Lights. And when that happened, Berkeley Lights I think in 24 hours had produced a response and ARC was all over it, you know, dissecting the report. And then the same short seller does this for Ginkgo and it's crickets. So we found that odd. And now that the company's responded, that's fair enough. And Ginkgo, or um, ARC hasn't said much themselves and that's fair enough. ARC has largely dismissed it. And if they really believe that everything is unwarranted, then why waste your time addressing it? But we still have the concerns that we've mentioned today. Now, in addition to the to the related party, there are also th some things we had raised about the company prior to any of this short selling short seller stuff happening. The management team is inexperienced, and there have been a, 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 quite a few success stories with inexperienced, sort of academic focused founders being able to run co successful companies. But it's usually good to bring into the management team some some pedigree, some experienced executives. So. We're, we're a little bit wondering about the management team's um, ability to, to, to build this company, as to, to build the company to the potential that it could be. The other concern are, is around all the equity they're taking in, and I'll give you an example. They recently worked with a cannabis firm on cannabinoids, and they're you know building a molecule, and the idea here is that you can extract from a cannabis plant some very rare cannabinoids. And they're so rare that if you covered the earth with cannabis, which wouldn't be a bad thing, if you covered the earth with cannabis and you extracted this cannabinoid, that you wouldn't even be able to get enough to build a product with it. So they're creating this synthetic cannabinoid and this cannabis company had given them a milestone payment. But if you look, the milestone payment is in the form of equity that goes to their balance sheet, but that's counted as, you know, revenue. We don't like that. We don't want to see equity in the place of revenues. And, and another bigger problem is that we don't have insights into successful products. And that's very important that this platform can produce molecules that can then be commercialized, that can displace existing products at scale. That proves the platform in the process. Ginkgo doesn't plan to dissect the services, the foundry services component from the royalty and equity component. And they say it here, this is from the last earnings call. We're internally evaluating this right now, good, but we do not anticipate that will make sense for us to either guide to, fair enough, 
or breakout foundry services revenue and downstream value share. Don't like that. You can, and they say, well, it's because of confidentiality. No, you can break that out at a high level to let us know what percentage of services you're receiving and what percentage are, uh, you know, is money coming from successfully commercialized products. And we're going to talk about why that's so important. And we're going to give you a couple examples in, a bit, in just a second. But the bottom line with Ginkgo is it's, over, it's an overvalued stock. Here we've taken their revenue projections for Foundry, just that services component, and broken this out. So they anticipate 2021, 100 million, 2022, 175, 2023, 341. And at today's market cap, they're still overvalued in 2023, provided they hit their target. So this is a very overvalued stock. It's a very exciting stock. We're watching it very closely. It's very interesting. We'll continue to follow it very closely, but we're not going long because it's overvalued. And we have a simple rule that keeps us from going long here for that reason. So the last thing that we wanted to talk about here, and we wanted to put this last because of a lot of the bulls don't want to hear negative things about their story stocks. And when you start to compare previous failures to current companies, they get upset, but we're gonna do it anyway. So in Trexon, if you've been an investor in synthetic biology or following synthetic biology stocks since they started debuting, as we have, you would be very familiar with Intrexon. This was a company that was extremely exciting. We were long the company, great story, doing something very similar. They had built a, a synthetic biology platform they're doing all this cool stuff across industries. And then it eventually imploded. And more or less, they couldn't do what they said they were going to do with their platform. And around the time that we had exited, our position was a, also coincided with a short seller report that had, had a lot of criticisms, but some that were really hard to ignore. I think when we exited in Trexon, it was around the time that they told an analyst on the call that, that they believed selling apple slices was a good idea because it would such there would be such high margins is your business selling apple slices or is your business developing your synbio platform it almost became embarrassing that they were trying to keep the story going when in fact they were failing at what they were doing and they also had related parties they also took a lot of equity on their balance sheet you can see here some of the examples of related parties in trexon energy and some of these other companies that they were working with were over-the-counter companies. And it was just, you know, that I think that, that they, one of the, the parties they were working with selling cattle and they had said, well, we're not, we, our revenues were down this quarter because not so many cattle were, were sold, things like that. It was very, it wasn't what everyone was promised. So this Google of Life Sciences tech platform had a collection of failed products. That's very important. Their platform couldn't produce products that could generate revenues. That's, that's, that's the whole point. The whole point is that regardless of, of, of who's doing it, you're using this platform, it produces a molecule and the molecule either creates a new market or displaces an existing market. That has to be, that has to be proven true. And if you can't do that, it falls on its face. That's why Intrexon has, has now no longer named Intrexon. They changed their name and they're doing something different. And if you held shares from their IPO, to today, you'd be down 86% on your position. Another example of a company that we wrote about prior to their IPO with criticisms around this build it and they will come model was Zymergen. Zymergen has built a platform similar to Ginkgo, similar to Intrexon, where they have a SynBio platform and they're building products on this. And they, they were building products and selling them themselves. We have a big problem with that business model. Ginkgo is not, right? Ginkgo builds products, somebody else sells them. And most likely the person who paid them for that molecule is gonna use the product, the resulting product, to displace products they already have, perhaps, or to displace their competitor's products. So is Zymergen's business to build a high optical quality film and then sell that to the masses? No, their business should be building, engineering that film, finding somebody who's willing to buy that molecule, that, that superior product from them, somebody who's experienced in selling high optical film, who has all the con industry context, who's already selling into the industry. Zymergen took this build it and they will come notion, this high quality film and said, well, we're gonna sell it and we're gonna displace all these other films. And then 
came out to the market and said, well, actually, things aren't going as good as we thought. So there's going to be problems and in, in, in the revenue per, uh, forecasts we made, you know, aren't, aren't really kind of come to fruition. And the stock price took a huge dump. And the biggest problem we have with Zymergen, it's incredible that this isn't being mentioned more. And props to them for admitting this because it's very important. They said, we haven't mastered our own manufacturing process at scale. That film you see there, that high align, that was being produced by a third party. And they said, well, once we, once we figure out our, our Symbio manufacturing process, we're then gonna manufacture it ourselves and then the third party can stop manufacturing it. The whole point was that your synthetic biology platform is producing this using nature in a more efficient manner. Why would you have that produced by someone else and then eventually work around? So they hadn't proved the concept. They, didn't have, they don't have traction. And as a result, since their IPO, shares are down 82%. Now, they may be able to pull that back together, but this isn't a company that we would invest in just based on their business model because we don't believe that their business should be trying to sell things directly to a market. And they're also not just focused on one industry, they're focused on multiple industries, as you can see here, agriculture, consumer care, electronics. Imagine producing products in each of those segments and then trying to sell sell those products. It's, it's very difficult. You would have seen other companies that were trying to do this. Um, I think uh, was Sologen. Can't recall the name of the company that was doing this, was trying to sell personal care products literally on their website. That doesn't work. So we don't believe that Zymergen is compelling even at an 82% discount. So these are just a couple examples of firms that have, have failed trying to do something similar to what Ginkgo is doing. Now, that's the end of today's presentation. The reason we hold these presentations and share these insights is so that we can help educate investors, show them what we're thinking, we can learn from, from people that, that criticize our approach. So please leave uh, a civil comments in the comment section on YouTube. We love to hear uh, contrary arguments and we learn as much from the people that read us as we do from the research that we perform. So please uh, put in your comments. We have a premium offering, which is why we do this in the first place. Our hope is that when we educate investors over time, they open their wallets and they do. So these days you have to help somebody before you can ask them for money. So do check out our premium offering. The articles that we've written, the research that we've done on Ginkgo, this is a summary of all that research can be found on our, on our website. If you search nanalyze.com for Ginkgo Bioworks, you can pull that up and read it for yourselves. Thank you very much for attending today and uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, we'll be putting out more uh, media as time goes on. Thank you very much.